scissor, scissor and comb. But there's a little bit of club cutting with, with clippers for you, okay? So we've got our centre profile, I've cross checked it, and now I'm using that guide to come straight across. Look at the angle of my fingers, and I'm pulling them up square, and I'll stop at the crown, okay? No different. So if I've done it now from the centre profile to the parietal bone, what have I got to do this side? Same. I can't go mirror it. So again, we come across, we pinch, and we pull. So it's pinch and pull. We take a section, leap half, take half, leap half, take half. We keep the guide with us. If you lose your guide in a haircut, what do you do? Find it. Go back. Find it. Do you put a new one in? No. No. Never ever. Find the guide, go back. Follow your map and find it. Don't put a new one in, because when you come and blend it, you put it in the mirror and it's like that. Whoa, hang on. What's happened here? That one's on a walk and that one's gone too short, because you've not followed the guide. Okay? So we're going to come through the centre, and again it's square. Look at the circular square going on. Look at the shape of my fingers are coming on the square. Yeah? If you want to not sure, look at the mirror and put your comb there. You can see the angle you're working. If you're that angle, you can see your comb elongated, you can see it in the mirror. So when you do your first section, put your comb on top to look at the shape in the mirror. You can't really see your fingers, you can see the shape of the comb, can't you? So you're looking directly down at the mirror. Use your mirror as another set of eyes. Okay? If your lighting's not very good where you're cutting, or you're in a part of the salon or in a part of the training room but the lighting's not brilliant, what would you do with the chair? Turn. Turn the chair. Don't keep the chair in a stationary position. Move the chair around. Always move the chair. Because if the light's better on one side, you can't physically get up and change the lighting. If it's better this side, when I come this way, I would cut it with that light on it as well. Important. Gives you balance. Okay? Gives you balance to your cutting techniques. If your cutting techniques are balanced, what does it help you get through the haircut do? What does it help you get through it? Quicker. Helps you get through it more emotionally, yeah? Okay, haven't cut the sides yet, we've cut the top, okay? I'm deliberately leaving the front edge. We pulled it all back when we come from the pan, we come back this way. So we, by pulling it back, what are we doing to the front? What are we retaining? The length. The length, okay? What you find as well when people cut all from the back, this is all whispery where you miss these bits because it's all been pulled back and retained. So when you do this bit, we come forward and we finish it afterwards. I'm sure I teach them to tack forward. Yeah, we tack forward exactly yeah. the same way. So as long as you're making a note of that at the end of it, that's the most important thing. Because a lot of people work from the back totally and leave this whispery bit at the front. Where they are retaining back, but it's a bit they haven't cut. So it's a bit of the old haircut. So I want to make sure we do cover it. And I will cover this in the front section in a minute, okay? We keep the hair damp, we keep the hair damp because it allows me to grind tension on hair, okay? And that's quite important. Okay, so centre profile is done, parietal bones done, now we're coming to the parietal ridge. Now I want to keep this quite square. So do I take the corners off or do I pull the corners out square? Pull them out, okay. My parietal bone. My guide is there in the corner, there's my bone, there, parietal bone, my guide is sitting there waiting for me, it's just there. Okay, remember I'm working away from the haircut. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm working away from the crown. I don't want to come up with the numbers and take the crown off. Okay? Saying earlier, Julie, when you walked out, what we do, a lot of people put a number straight in and they go up too high to the parietal high transition. They just follow it up to the round of the head. It leaves them very little to blend, and they struggle with the blend. In order to get that blended, they then go into the parietal ridge and they start cutting the sections away and round in the haircut. So by doing it the wrong approach, you change the haircut you wanted. And you come out with something you didn't want. Whose fault's that? Your fault. You're the one holding the scissors. Remember the position you're in. I'm in the dominant position, I'm standing up. My client's in a submissive position, he's sitting down. Who's in charge? Me. Me. All the time. Whatever happens in this box is my responsibility. Okay? You can't blame the client. It's my fault. Why is it my fault? What have I done wrong? Two things I've done wrong. What have I done wrong? If I've got the haircut wrong. You've not done your consultation. Consultation's right? incorrect. 100%. What's the second thing? I've checked with the client. I've checked with it and I haven't done my approaches wrong. My whole setup and my approach to that haircut, which I said I would do, is wrong. I've done it the wrong way. Okay? You find blame, barbers blame their clients if they're bad haircuts. It wasn't my fault, it's was really hard to cut. Who's had a haircut in their chair? In the salon, and you must have, I've definitely had it. I've been told my barber said my hair is really hard to cut, I've got yeah. really difficult hair to cut. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, can you cut my type of hair? Yeah. What, on your head? Yeah, I'll do that, yeah. It's on your head, I'm, I'm quite good at head hair, it's quite good. 
what I do. Yeah, but I've been told my hair is really hard to cut. No, 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 it's told by a barber that she can't cut it out. They can't cut your hair and they've cocked it up. So because they've cocked it up, it's their fault. They've got hard hair. Bubby, it's you. You're the barber. No hair is hard to cut at all. There's no such thing as a hard haircut. There's challenging haircuts that will test you. But nothing's hard because you train properly to cut it. I so get then, told all the time that my hair is hard to cut. Yeah, oh, my, my hair is really thick. I've got really... No, you haven't. Oh, I've got really thick hair. No, you haven't. No, no, you've got coarse hair. You've got quite a lot of hair. Dense hair. You ain't got thick hair. You've got loads of hair. It's quite fine, but it's dense. Yeah, you've got really, really thick hair. It's really hard to cut. No, it's not. It's sort of disillusion. You know, it's not that hard. It's hair. I've cut it loads. Of, cut one just like yours about two minutes ago. Well, I didn't really struggle with that one. That was all right. So, it's to do when people talk like that to you. Clients talk that way because they've had a bad experience and the barber has blamed the client. So what I'm trying to say is, don't blame your client for your cock up. Don't cock up in the first place. Cut it quickly. Use your tools, use your eyes, use your feet, use your chair, use your lighting, use your mirrors, use your mouth, <coughs> use your tools. Use your white clippers, use the different type of clippers to do the job. Okay, use the tools on you to do a great job. Do not blame your tools. Okay, don't blame the client. He just happens to be there, it's not his fault, okay? Correcting haircuts is, is a great job of mine. I love going for other people's haircuts and trying to sort that something that someone's took off and it's just terrible. Okay. Prital bone, my guide is sitting there on both sides, correct? Okay. So this is where I reverse cut. I come through and I use my guide for my prital bone and I come across to my prital ridge, but I'm coming out with square, so I retain the length of the corners. Okay? I'm not coming out at that angle where I take the corner out. I'm coming square, okay? And the reason being is I want to come up with a two and blend in a medium transition, not high, because I want to retain the length to come across the front. And I want to keep the crown longer so it grows nice, okay? If I come up too high on the high transition blend, where's it going to go? Into the crown. I'm going to take the crown off, okay? We've already established Stephen's hair, the crown is quite dominant. If cut incorrect, it will ping up. It's got different movements. So I'm going to work with the crown and tailor it, okay? So, coming through at an angle, we're going to come nice, neat sections. We're going to use the guide from the parietal bone. I'm going to take it to the ridge into the high transition weighting. So it's one move from the parietal bone to the high transition, okay? So notice my bottom blade stays dead still. Okay, I'm not doing this. I'm not chomping at someone's head. I'm not cutting a bush or is someone's hair, okay? So I've got control of my scissors all the time. So my bottom blade sits in my hand, and I'm going to use the top blade, okay? That makes sense? Why is that more important than that? What does that do, and what does that do? Well, that's going to give you a nice, keep it even. That's softer. What we call, what I call the duck. I don't let him do the duck. Yeah, that's more consistent. That is about as inconsistent as you want. You're not cutting bits of bacon up. For a, cutting even a bit of paper. It's hair. Control, yeah? When you scissor over combing, it's your base finger that moves the top, don't move, it's your finger, it's your thumb. It's not this. Okay? That makes sense? Yeah. So when you scissor over combing, your thumb, your finger goes there and that sits just on the inside of your cutting side to the edge of the comb now. Okay? And they play together, they dance together. Okay? Who watched you strictly come dancing? Come on, let's be honest. A bit of a guilty pleasure, we like that Saturday nights, don't we? A bit of ballroom nights, I'll get my dress on. And then I'll have a party in my house. All right, so, they dance together. This is not scissor over comb. This is not clipper over comb. This is clipper over comb. Yeah? This is scissor over comb. This is razor over comb. It's not this. Like I said earlier, wow, it's amazing, look at that haircut. Yeah? Don't work like that, does it? It's consistency, okay? They have Roger's pro edge combs in their kits. Oh, Roger Wigmore's? Yeah. I know him, Roger. I know, Rog. I know, I love Roger. Roger's hair, he's one of my best buds. Roger Wigmore's amazing. Yeah, we, I, his combs are in their kits. So I had started barbing through Roger. Did you really? Yeah, I worked at Wiggies for 11 years. Did, I did my level four with him. That's how I met him. He's a good man. Oh, he's ace. He's a great, great barber, Roger. Oh, he's an amazing barber. He's a great barber. But he's a funny guy. Very, very funny boy. He's up the road to me. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, always meet, I always meet up with him and have a coffee with him when I see him. When he's, he's a good boy, Roger. So, we're doing the same this side. Remember, there's your guide. There's my parietal bone. There's my guide for my parietal bone, and I'm moving it into my ridge area. So, I'm coming inwards now. Then palm to palm. So, this is palm to palm cutting. 
Okay, so anything that won't cut in into it from the farm. So now I'm retaining the corners, we're coming across from the part of bone to the corner of the high transition. So you can see the shape coming through now, yeah? I'm going to cut the front at the end, okay? So you can see the shape now, where it's come up quite square, nothing sticking out the sides. The whole top section here is done, except for the front. The reason I put the front in last, we make sure all balances, taper out the temples, then connect the front. Okay? So the crown is king. Remember we said about the crown? My guide is sitting right there on top of the crown. It's also sitting around there and there. I've moved it to the parallel bone, parallel ridge, and it's sitting on the higher transition either side. Okay? So what I'm now going to do is work the crown around and the point where it sits down in that corner we're going to keep. So I know this crown's now going to sit down because I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to cut away from the crown. Okay? So I'm working around in orange segments and taking out the peaks that make the crown stick up and the whole crown will now sit down. I'm going to work palm to palm, okay? Put it out, get attention to it, and I'm going to work away from the crown, okay? And the reason we work away from the crown, it stops the crown sticking up when we cut it, okay? That makes sense? So we're coming around, using the guide, carrying the guide around. There's my guide in the top. I'm going to come down, okay? And we're going to come down. And then we're going to connect it <coughs> to the transition to the corners. So again, changing angles and moving the way the hair grows. We all have agreed the hair grows round, doesn't it? So I'm cutting it with the grain. I'm working the way with the haircut. If I'm doing that, what's it ever going to stop the crown doing? What's it going to prevent you all doing? Sticking up. That's the goal. I don't want to give him a perfect haircut. Because he hasn't got the hardest haircut in the world to cut. He might be told it a million times, but he hasn't. He's just got a haircut. Okay? And everybody's hair is different. Everybody's DNA is different. So you can't put a box haircut on every single person. Everybody's got to be tailored. And there's the skill of barbering. Okay? If you do a generic haircut like you would do on the blocks, every haircut's different. It isn't like block heads, is it? Hair's different. And it's got different behaviour patterns. It has night rolls, cow's licks, crowns that stick up, double crowns. Who's ever cut a triple crown? I don't know. I've caught one sort of like net where it's stuck up right in the centre. Great, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. He's just got the whole ones and he looks like he's got two double ones crown. on it. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? But they probably cut too short, so if you grow them, it'll work out. Yeah. People will just cut them off. They don't know how to do it, they cut it off, which is wrong. Okay, we're now sitting at the high transition. Okay, we're sitting at this level all the way around, correct? So what we're going to do is reverse them. We're going to use an open clipper. Uh, we're going to use a magnetic clipper. Use a 0 0.5. I'm going to open the clipper. Remember the drawbridge is open. Okay, and we're going to revert to a clipper comb. So a couple of things with clipper combs. If you've got dark hair, what sort of colour comb do you need to use? White comb. White comb. Why would you use a white comb that's got dark hair? Sorry? You see the hair. You see the hair. You see the distance. Remember whatever's coming through the comb you cut in? So if I have blonde hair, which one would you use? Okay, I'm going to use that one. For a girl. Not when I fancy it. <laughs> I love that on a Saturday. Yeah. I use that comb when I'm happy and the staff know I'm really in a good mood. Okay, it's got the pink comb out, so I've modelled No, you don't have any off. Okay. So I use the pink comb when I'm probably happy. So we use the white comb. It's a trick question. Don't mind about it. Right. High transition down. So the guy's sitting there. So now we're going to reverse bend. What we are going to do is called chamfering, okay? It's a technique that's not taught at college, it's, it's a, I've invented what we do. When a chamfer coming with the grain of the hair, this way, meets a taper coming that way, what does it create? When a chamfer meets a taper, what does it create? A ridge, a ridge. Opposite. Opposite. The opposite to a ridge. If you put your taper blade, remember your bevel blade in, what's it create? It creates a weight line, yeah. naturally. Okay, and then you spend an hour trying to get it out, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's good fun, isn't it? I love when people put fades and they put a one in and a null, and then they take that out and then they spend an hour trying to take that, then they put another line in it. What's that about? Three hours going through lines. It's fun to watch, isn't it? It's a killer. I don't put lines in here because you've got to take them out. What's the point of putting them in? You use your eyesight and you use your guides and you use your structure. You don't need to put a line in to take the line out. It's a complete waste of time. It's non productive. You're putting something to take it out again, it's pointless. What we're going to do, we're going to reverse bend, so we're going to do a chamfer. And what a chamfer is, with the point five, the hair runs this way, we're going to cut with the shape of the hair. We're going to cut with it. And naturally, you want to go this way, don't you? 
The difference is amazing. When you cut with the hair, you chamfer down into the high transition into your medium. On the one connection, it doesn't matter if the hair is that long on top and that short at the sides. There's only one connecting point. It's your transition. Whether it's high, medium or low, there's only one connecting point. Agreed? One point where the hair cut collides and blends. Okay? So, you can have the hair that long on top and a one on the sides. It's still got a blend somewhere unless it's a disconnection. Okay? Do you know the same disconnection, the connection of a haircut? No. Yeah? Disconnection where you have it stepped out and you have to you have a step or whatever you have in it that disconnects it or an overhang or an undercut is a disconnection. Invariably, haircuts blend. Okay, they have a graduation. Okay? So we're going to work with the grain. We're going to work backwards. We're going to take the guy from the side and we're going to work with the grain. Okay? And we're going to do something called curving. Okay? And what curving does is when you take the blade and you work it in that motion. Okay? You think about it. Everybody uses the blade this way, and then they use it that way. True? Who uses it this way? Who uses it that way? Brilliant. So when you use it that way, what does it give you at the top? A weight line. Then you go up, and then you take the weight line out that way. What does it create then? Got another weight line. Got a long one. So you go up again and take that one out, and what do you do? Another weight line. And it starts there and it ends up up there and you chase your haircut. Watch it too many times. You put the weight line in, take the weight line out. Put a weight line in, take it out. So by putting it in, you're taking it out. By taking it out, you're putting it back in. Correct? It's false prophecy. It's false work. What you're doing, you're creating work for yourself. It takes longer to blend. So think of my theory. If you come with the grain, what are you not creating? No weight line. If you bring a taper into a non-weight line area and it connects like that, what have you not created? A weight line. It's quicker. It's quicker and it's actually much more detailed, it's much more stylish, it's much easier. So, this is called a chamfer and this is called a taper. So when a chamfer meets a taper, what do you create? A blend. A blend. How simple is that? Have you ever tried that one before? Never seen it? Never tried it. Okay. So, when I was in the States with Vantage, we'd done this at, and the Americans went, I've never seen that done, they loved it. And all started doing it, which was really fun actually. Good. I, like I teach them to work on a 45 degree, on, on working like round the shape of the head, so my colleagues yes. that's how I teach them to do it, so that they don't get that. They don't I get the weight line. I don't put lines in haircuts. I, well, hair I don't, you see people on stage put a line in and then watching them for an hour getting the line out is painful. That. Painful. Yeah. It's not. It's not. But not educating at all. It's just that is just watching someone desperately trying to get away and watching sweat. I've got this line out. I've got a line out. Sippy line. It's awful. So we don't know how many do we? Let's get this out now. Go from there. So we're going to chamfer. Okay. We come from the crown area because we've got the left sitting on the crown. We're guide sitting now, and I'm chamfering into a number two. Okay. I know that's a number two because of the distance I hold in the cone naturally. You can get your number two guide and you can check it. Take the guard off and check the distance on the guard through the hair. Okay, you haven't got to have it connected. You can get your number two guard and you can put it in and you can check the distance it's going in. Use it as a guide, keep it in your pocket, even if you don't use it, then you can use it to finish, okay? I oh, know it's a two, I'll show you number two in a minute. So look at the way it's sitting so far. It's coming off the crown, it's soft, isn't it? Okay? No light line in it? Good, isn't it? Okay, we're going to do the same on the crown. We're going to work the crown. Remember the way the crown moves this way? So we're now going to work off the baseline of the crown, away from the crown, we're going to work into that medium transition. Remember we've got the high, the medium and the low. We're working on sections. O bones there, masculine bones are there, and we've got that line. Anything below that, at the back of the head is where you're going to start your taper. You ain't going to start your taper four foot up the middle of your head. It starts down there, okay? This is called a hairstyle. It's not called a butcher job. We're not going to just shave it up to here and take his crown off. You're not going to get clipper happy. So, oh, that might come off. Oh, that's good. See what we do. It's great. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you're quite measured of how we're going to put it together. So there's my guide at the back. See the guide? You all see that? And we're going to work away from the crown. And the reason we're going to work away, and we're going to chamfer. So we're going to come down, and we're going to be very, very measured in how we bring this round, okay? 
and this is called chamfer. You're coming with the grain. See how that sits? Much softer. Okay. So we're working down the structure. We're going from the centre, part of bone, part of ridge, high transition down to the medium. Now I'm working down the haircut. Have I cut anything twice so far? Nothing. Because I only get paid once. Great, isn't it? <laughs> what a great theory. It's good, isn't it? You make good money if you're a good barber doing that. It's good. Right. Okay, backhand there. The same technique. Chamfering away from the quieter ridge and the higher transition, we're going to get it into the medium transition, okay? So again, I'm working with the grain on a 0.5 clipper. And I'm holding the comb out quite square. So we retain them corners. I'm not going to put a line in and we're going to retain mm -hmm. it. So I'm just going to come around there. And again, I'm using a cordy clip to show you how we do it. <coughs> it's a magnetic motor. This is used for blending, okay? The hair's fairly dry, but it's fine. It's good for lighter hair. Remember, the magnetic clip is better for lighter hair, not thick, coarse hair. Mm -hmm. Stephen's hair is quite fine. There's lots of it, it's fine. Okay? So what I don't want to do is put a really heavy duty clip in. I keep it quite light, yes. Quick question, why do you do it on a 0.5 and not a zero? The reason I do a 0.5, it gives you more, move for, for more room for error. Okay. So if you put a zero and you go in, and maybe you go for the top of the hair, and you get the eye over the top, yeah. that's why you should never ever clip her with a cutting comb. Always use a clipper comb. There's a design built for it, because the blade's as thick as the clipper guard. Yeah? You want to make sure this works as a moving guard. If you've got a scissor comb, it's half that size, and you can drop either side of it and go into the haircut. Okay? So a 0.5 gives you more leeway. Then we come in and we can then adjust it down to a 0 if we need to. It gives you more movement. Okay? So when I blend out or chamfer on a haircut, I always do a 0.5 over comb. Then I can always shut it down to a 0 if I want to get closer. But I'm more measured. Again, I've never cut Steve's hair before. So I want to make sure what we do is measured. I'm not going to scalp him. I'm going to make sure he's exactly what he wanted. A two finish, etc. Okay? So we're going to 0.5 still, and we're going to just come down from the higher transition into there, okay? So that whole section's done now. See where we are here? We're sitting just there on both sides. Get it? Okay. We can then introduce our taper, okay? Then we can run numbers in, and we can do it over a comb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in a second. I'm going to turn it around and show you. So... What do we say when a chamfer meets the taper? What does it create? Blend. A blend. So tapering is when you come up into the hair, correct? So I'm going to do a taper into this corner at about a two, okay? So, again, my guide is in just there. We can see it. High transition to the medium. The medium transition is where we're going to connect now. This is the blend. This is the bit that's going to go two to long, okay? We've established that straight away, okay? So we're going to use a taper, and it's coming up. And look at the angle of the comb. The comb is tapering up and it's hitting the angle of the chamfer area at the same length. Okay? So a chamfer makes the tape, it creates a blend. And what I'm going to do is use the clipper guard, the comb as the moving guard. Okay, again on 0.5. How's that blend looking so far on that? It's flawless, it's easy. Okay? You can use a number on it if you want to. But when you put a number, you will tend to flick out more, so you will create a slight ridge. So what I do, I taper with a comb, and then I go in for number two to make sure it's all perfect. Okay? The two is more like the finishing blade. That's the level we want to finish at. So I'm going to do it backwards here, and you can see me taper this section here, okay? So look at the angle of the comb. I pull the comb out, 0.5. And as I come up with the taper, what am I doing with the blade itself? What am I doing with the blade? Am I coming up there? No. I'm curving it. You think about it. That gives a straight line, that gives a straight line. What does that create? There's no straight line. You can't physically put a straight line in if you're not doing a straight motion. So the idea I don't want straight lines or weight lines in here. I use the clippers differently. I use them in a way that I cannot create a straight line. I curve a blade. Okay? Makes sense, doesn't it? So, I'm putting the taper in, but I'm actually curving it in. So what this is actually doing is creating that blend from the high to the medium into the low transitional weight. Okay? So there's my taper going into my chamfer, which creates the blend. 
And again, you can just see we come through the edge there, over the comb, which is soft. Get down this slightly steeper from the peak. And I'm going to taper down, chamfer down, and then I'm going to taper up. So the taper meets the chamfer, it creates a blend. So I'm moving it down to the eye bone. Okay, there's my eye bone sitting now. Do we have a blend on an eye bone? No. Why not? Because uh, it's hard, it just makes it hard to so. It's impossible to blend out. It's protruding in bone, it's impossible to blend out. If you're coming forward, you blend above it. If you're coming backwards, you blend below it. It's that weight distribution and the shape. It's all about the shape and the design of the cut you're doing. Does that make sense? So again, <coughs> chamfering down off the ovone and then tapering into it, yeah? So chamfer and taper meet and they create a blend. As I'm coming up, I'm curving the blade away. There's no straight lines in what I'm doing, okay? The shape coming through. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Right, so now we're going to put number two in. We want to finish on the two, we already said this, didn't we? So your number two goes in. Um, I use these magnetic clipper guards, these are quite cool. And you still the magnetic ones as well. How many put, put clipper guard that's come off in the hand? He's put a hole in the back of someone's head before. Cut out, I've done it. Yeah. How does it feel? The worst thing in the whole wide world, isn't it? You want to just swallow you up. It's always on a busy day with those people waiting watching you. You just want to, I can't cover it because I might have to put on your head. Right, how do you stop that happening? Finger on the guard. Magic finger. Well done, thank you. Put your finger on the guard. Hold your clippers like that and put your finger on the guard all the time. It will not flick off. How can it flick off sometimes? What have you got in the head? You don't see. Moles, bumps, pimples. Birthmark, gloves, anything you can't see, it catches it and flicks it off. I use magnetic guards for that reason, look. Ain't going anywhere. They stick on. So they go on there, and then a the magnet sticks into the metal base. That ain't never going to come off. But my habit still puts my finger on it every time. Okay? So we're going to introduce number two, okay? So there's my number two coming into it. <coughs> so you now see how quick and how simple that blend has come apart. It's much, much easier. Number two finish. Now I'm blending down from the tapered bow bone area, the masculine bone, the protruding bones either side into the neckline, okay? So it's much, much softer. The whole haircut sits down where it should sit down. There's nothing sticking up. We've kept the shape in, and then we're finishing with the number two. <coughs> yeah? That makes sense? And I'm doing something called a C motion. We're using your wrist. Okay, it's all about rocking of the wrist, okay, when you're cutting hair. It's this shape, it's more control. Okay, this arm tucks in, and it's all about this action. It's not about that. You're not baking a cake, you're not whisking nothing, you're whipping a horse, yeah, you're cutting hair, all control. So if you can pull your arm in and just use your wrist motion, it's called a C motion, that one now. Okay, you've got more control than your clipper. Okay, who works like that? Anybody? Thank God for that, because that's a habit you've got to get rid of. Tuck your elbow in and use your wrist, more control, yeah? And you use your hand that way. Okay, you can, that's what you need to do, move your control. Okay? So again, C motion, finger on the guard all the time, and I'm flicking into just a low transition, okay? That correct? I'm keeping on that section down to the masculine bone, right down to the base, and then we're flicking in. And all we then got to do is perfect this up, the connection. Take a second scissor over comb, shoot a bit of clip over comb, whatever you're going to do. Okay? But I've kept to the structure of the haircut. So all the structured areas I've told you about, I've worked down that section, haven't I? Yeah? And if you implement that into your work, it's a lot quicker than going through the sides, then going through the top, then going through the sides again, then cutting the top down, then you've got to go back and try and get the crown sit down, and then you've adjusted the crown, so the top's got to go shorter again, it's the third time you've got it, and you keep going through this system and you keep cutting. We said at the end, where's your conclusion? You've got to know where it finishes. Yeah? Consultation, execution, conclusion. The conclusion is when you don't know when you stop cutting sometimes, is because you keep going over the same work and trying to perfect it, then you lose the shape. And then you lose the haircut. And this is where we're saying, this is where, if anything, you probably lose it on your 
uh, on your assessments where you overcut, and you don't need to do that. Okay. We're going to go on a one and a half. Okay, one point five into the base. The reason we're doing that, this is to a two, but a one point five gives me that little taper. Okay. And we talked about the nape wells and the baseline here. You've got strengths here, weaknesses here, and strengths here. How do we make this more balanced? Do we cut a new hairline four foot up in the air there and just cut it off? Yeah. <coughs> you can round it. You can taper it. You can taper it. If you doubt, taper it out. We said that. But if you've got strengths, if you soften the strengths, what does it do to the weaknesses? Balances it. So when you've got strong areas, soften the strengths, it encourages the weaknesses, it balances it. Don't try and do the whole thing. Okay, look at where the strengths are, map your hair, cut. okay. Two strong areas will soften them, make the middle bit look weaker. Makes it look stronger, yeah? Okay, we're gonna prove that with this. So I'm working on the Nate Wells here on a 1.5. I'm not going mad, I'm not gonna cut his hair too short, because I want him coming back. He doesn't want a skin fade, it's not his style, okay? Alright? So we're using the clipper guards to make sure the C motion's in, see this movement of the C motion. Very, very light. And I'm being very, very strategic where I'm putting it. I'm not chasing it right up into the two. I'm using a 1.5 to the edges. And again, watching where the width of the hair is here. Again, it's quite wide. So I don't want to make it too short around there. And again, a 1.5 on the sideburn. Sideburn hair grows quicker than head hair because it's beard hair. It's got a different growth pattern. So when they connect on the sideburn, usually it's advisable sometimes if the sideburn's dominant to take it down slightly a number below. So if you have a one on the side, put the sideburns at a 0.5. Take it back a little bit, okay? It's important. If you leave the sideburns at a one in a week, there are farmers out here, they're big. Okay, we don't want that. Okay, so we're now tapering in this here, okay? Okay. Clip a comb goes behind, so it doesn't go in deep and I have my blade facing outwards. Why don't I have my blade that way? When I'm cutting around ears. Why wouldn't I do that? Think about it, position of the blade. Mm, what so can't I see? Why, what can't I see? Mm. I can't see what the blade's doing. Mm. I can't see over the blade. The blade's facing away from me. If I can turn the blade that way, I can see what the blade's cutting. If I turn it from there to there, I can see everything that blade's doing. I'm not going in too deep. I'm not losing it too short. Also, I'm pivoting. Okay, my pivot finger. Okay, so I'm pivoting around. I'm using the comb to pop the hair out for me. So we are keeping it to a 1.5 on the very, very edge. I'm not scalping him. Okay, and the comb stops me going in. It's a, it's a guard. Plus, also know the length is a 1.5. And again, we said about tapering off the, tape, the temples, softening them out. We can put the comb in and we can physically taper the temples out. And that makes the top look more dominant, it looks softer. Okay? I'm going to do the same the other side. But this side, I'm going to go this way because I'm right handed, okay? So, again, blade facing outwards. I can see the blade. My comb sits behind. Where's my combs here? It's to guide me and make sure I don't go into the haircut. I don't want to go into one over here, it's done. So that stops me going in, it guides me, yeah? Make sense? I pop the hair back, I put the comb that way, and I use it just to pop the hair out of the way. <coughs> and then we finish on the 1.5 round here, very, very lightly. And we go from there. Again, the comb sits in. To make sure down to a one at the very very corners so we can soften out. You can do it over comb by 0.5 or 1 or 0, you can do it you want. I'm going to put the edges in a minute, we're going to use the T liners to edge out the D4s you use. Okay, I'm going to show you how you use that. Um, these are called taper clippers because they're used inside the haircut. Okay, when do you use a mini clipper? What you use? Where would you use it? Where would you use a mini clip ideally in a haircut? Yeah, that's just on the outside. Yeah. Hasn't got a taper blade, hasn't got an adjustable blade. <coughs> if you use it inside the haircut, what's the possibility could happen? You can slip and it can go in, and there's nothing out there, it's going to blend it out. You can damage your haircut. So because they're called outliners, the clue's in the name. 
outside the haircut, not inside. It never goes in there unless you're doing patterns. It stays virtually on the outside. It's a trimmer. It's a finishing sole. It's not a cutting sole. Mm. All right? You can get the wider heads on these and you can get the attachments that turn them into cutting tools. It's the only time you ever use them. So you've got the number one, two, three guys, but they're really for beards. They're not really for cutting hair with. They're not. They only last for 60 minutes and they take overnight to charge. So if you're using it inside your haircut, that's going to run out pretty quick. So you use your magnetic or your rotor, your pivot clippers inside the cut. You use these purely for the outside. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Okay. So we're going to go back to our cutting comb at the end. And we're going to start finishing the haircut out. We're going to go back in and scissor this. We're going to scissor that connection out. Okay, scissor over comb. So, with this, we keep it as wide as we can to the natural hairline, okay? So at about... Um, Chitty chitty bang bang, we go right around there, we go like that. Oy, lovely, big fat gap man there. Go on that, do we? Okay. So we use it on the outside. See the blade sticking outwards? I can see the blade at all times, yeah? You don't be doing that because you can't see what this bit's doing. I could be doing this and you can easily go inside and cut it with that bit. Okay, case it's a T bar, it goes quite wide. So again, from that way, you turn your clippers that way, you can see the blade. You want to see the cutting blade all the time. Okay, I want to see what I'm doing constantly, yeah? That makes sense? Okay. Pulling the comb out, we work away. Put my finger over the eyebrow. What do we do back when we're doing this? Imagine someone comes and pats you on the back, oh, okay, bang, crack, this eyebrow. That's gone off, that's lovely. He's got his eyebrow missing now. Thanks. How are you going to grow that back in two minutes? These ain't never going to go back, it's taking it straight off. So I always put my finger there as a guard. I'm protecting me doing that going too far down. Okay, my finger stays there. I cannot possibly cut his eyebrow off. I've seen people do it by mistake when they've gone down so they caught the corner of the eyebrow. It happens. Especially if the temple line's quite small. So if your finger's there, it's a preventative. It reminds you, like I put my comb there, not to go too high. I can put my comb there to guide out so I don't go in. I use this as guides all the time. You know, so I've always got a comb in my hand. Always have a comb in your hand all the time. A lot of barbers don't. They just use the clippers for very good. And you're going to get the hair to come out. You use the comb. Comb's king. Every single hair that you do is a comb. Okay. Just going to do the edge here. Okay. We're going to go down the temporal lines here, straight down the sides here. Okay. We're going to come down. Keep it nice and wide, we've already tapered it, so we're coming down the natural hairline, okay? Good way of doing it, leave your comb at the back, this way. Want to know your natural hairline? Put your comb down. Don't cut <coughs> the comb, obviously, in case your comb's in the wrong position. But use your comb to guide where you're roughly going to go, yeah? You don't cut into hairlines. Why don't we cut into the hairline and create a new one? What does it look like in a week? Back, You've got a double hairline, it's horrendous, doesn't it? He used to work with a barber years ago called Dane, great barber, really good. Tell his haircuts, he boxed everything in the back. Great haircut, couldn't do necklines, you just done bang, 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 every haircut. Week later, like double hairline, it was great. Awful, alright? Just lays on necklines, you couldn't do them. So while I'm going to learn them, he avoided them, he just done his own neckline. Didn't know what sort of neckline they buy out on his hair, he just put his own one in. Honest to God, great barber, but idiot. Right, okay. <laughs> Honest to God, terrible trying to work the work out. Comb goes there, and we can see roughly where my hairline is going to be, yeah? Get it? Okay. So I follow the structure of a haircut absolutely from top to bottom, haven't I? Haven't cut anything twice. I follow the structure through. I've used my guide, I've used my lighting, I've stepped back as well when I'm doing sideburns, I'm looking directly at the bigger picture. But my peripheral vision. I've softened temple lines off, I've worked away, my comb's there to protect the eyeball. Look, so I do it this way, on this side. My comb stays there. You remind me not to come down. See that move? That's why you have to have a comb in your hand all the time. It's important, it's a great, it's a great tool, not just for cutting, it's a great, isn't it? it? Does lots of things. Okay? Now you've got two neckline, now you've got two neck wells, and you've got a soft neckline in the middle. So now we're going to go back to <coughs> And then you take called Nitona comb. Anybody understand one of them? It's called Nitona Matador comb. It's number three saw cut time. It's really fine. I'm okay, going to use that for finishing. Okay, it's like a moving guard. Okay, so you use it with the T liners, with the mini clips, and we literally taper out 
very lightly what we've already started to take on. And as you hit it, the same motion comes away on both sides. How's that net one looking? Nice and natural, yeah? We haven't made hard work of it, have I? I haven't started chasing it, I haven't started putting a new one in, I've kept it as wide and natural as I can, because I know it's going to grow back nice. Okay? What a lot of guys wear every day to work, what I'm wearing now? Shirt, yeah. Collar, yeah? I wear a collar every single day, shirt and tie every day, I've always had that, mate. A lovely neckline on a decent collar, nothing smart is there. It just looks on point. A bad neckline on a collar oh, highlights it. Look at that, looks like a big underline. Look at that neckline. Hideous, isn't it? There you go. So we don't want hideous necklines. You want to work your neckline properly. Look at the way it moves, look at the way it goes. Try and find out the best way of retaining shape. Do not chase a neckline. And what's the other thing we must do on necklines? No, the collar. <coughs> Always ask people to go slightly below, whether you use an open razor, whether you use mini clippers. I don't even need a new razor on Steve's neckline, it's not hairy, it's fine, and I don't want to put a razor on it, it's quite soft. So a razor will probably raise his neckline, I don't want to do that, okay? Don't want to irritate use your stab you a little bit sometimes. Um, making sure the collar line's clean. If you wear a shirt, and you've got a customer in your chair with a shirt and tie on, and you don't loosen the tie and go below it, what happens when he actually goes and wears a t-shirt at the weekends? He's got a nice new roll neck around his neck. He's got a hair roll neck. He's got a perfect line of hair where you've missed it. And it sits above the collar of his t-shirt. Don't that. So I always ask him, do you want to go below the collar line? It's a nice question. It shows care and attention. A lot of guys, actually yeah, because I normally get my wife to trim her. Don't let her trim your hair because then they go into this. They get a bit excited and start cutting this. And it's like screwing up your hair cut, don't they? So, it's important, but it's that little detail. Devil's in the detail, what you do. Everything's important on detail, okay? So the taper work and the scissor work, we use a rotary clipper, we use a magnetic clipper. We didn't use a pivot in this one, okay? We used the magnetic and a rotary. The rotary, the ma magnetic clipper's for polishing and taking shaping. It moves very, very quickly. 7,200 spins per minute, okay? Strokes per minute. And what that's doing is fine blending. Then we used the rotary to bolt remove, didn't we? We got the bulk out with the rotary clipper, okay? And we used then the rotary to finish down the base because it's got no resistance. The outside liner, the T liner is a rotary clipper. So it works very, very quick, 6,000 strokes per minute, but it's neat and it's tight and it's tiny blades, okay? You must never use it inside the haircut, we've established that, okay? So I'm do a bit of scissor over comb on the inside just to finish out. Before I do that, what I normally do, Step back and have a look at my haircut. We're going to put the front in. I left the front deliberately. We're going to put that in now, and also we're going to finish off this scissor work and the edges. Okay? Why I don't chase that with clippers? I don't want to undo the work I've done. I've put the chamfer and the taper in. It's perfect. Okay? That looks pretty good to me. I can see a slight weight there, but it's only for the shape of the haircut. Okay? So if I went in with clippers, I can actually take my haircut and deconstruct it quite easily, couldn't I? So I'm going to be very, very fine blender. I'm going to go over scissor over comb and just polish it, okay? And let's finish it. That's the fine work, okay? If you follow your structure, you'll find yourself five minutes at the end just to polish haircuts. That make sense? So, first thing we're going to do is come back to this corner here on the bridle ridge, and there's my guide, and we're going to cut it, as you say, as you said, coming forward on it, okay? And we're going to follow that guide right across, putting it out of line, you can point cut this if you want to. I actually don't particularly like point cutting. I think it looks very bitty. To me it's very hairdressery. Hairdressers are cut, it's all point cutting. Can't stand it. Not everything has to have texture in it. Texture normally covers up bad blending. You don't need to. If you're a good barber, you don't need to do it. So if I see barbers point cutting everything, I'll just say actually, why do you want to pick point cutting that? All this all the time. It's actually just as good. Take the edges out. You haven't got to go mad. I certainly haven't gone short on Stevens, and I haven't done anything he doesn't normally have done. I've kept it very, very simple because, again, it's a demonstration haircut. He hasn't got a mirror in front of me, he's very trusty. So I'm making sure that I'm being very cautious and being very sensible, okay? Okay, now we're going to scissor over comb in that one transition. Notice what my comb's doing. Watch my comb when I'm scissor over combing. What's it now going to do? 
What do I do in the last section of this? Comb? What am I doing in my comb? The comb is moving slow, the scissors are moving fast, yeah? <coughs> Watch the shape of the comb. Square, and then I curve it. The reason I curve it, I introduce the medium, the high, and the ridge. I'm making sure everything on that line blends. Very, very little is coming out. It's all done through chamfering and tapering. But this is polishing. When I polish hair out, I always say to my staff or my trainees, I say, why do we bother doing all that? So the reason we do it is like a chef. When they send their plate out, they check it. Okay? You check your plate, they put the jus on, they dress the plate. The food's the food. Once it's left that serving point, it goes on that table, you can't get it back. Once that guy's left the chair, oh, I missed that bit. I didn't, oh, I forgot. Too late. Can you come back at sorry, I missed the sideburns. Come on. Well, I missed I missed it. I missed the sorry. You lost it. Make sense? So make sure you are double this is me double checking everything. This is me cross checking everything. I go through and just make sure everything on my haircut is sitting nice enough so when it goes out, it's all gonna sit there. It takes me literally minutes to go through. This is me double checking. And I'm just going through it very, very lightly to make it look softer. Okay? A lot of my own personal work is quite soft now. When I was younger, it was quite harsh and quite out there. It was all patterns. I've done loads of it with Roger. I've done loads with Roger. I've done loads of them like texture cuts. And it, things change. And my style has changed. I've got older. You'll notice your styles change. What you're doing now won't be what you're doing in 10 years' time. You might come back to it in 25. I'm going back to Haircuts Island 20 plus years ago. It's coming back and I'm learning it a different one, I'm teaching it a different one I was taught. Because I'm picking up what I learned, I'm also looking at how the guys are doing it now. How the young guys have picked it up straight away, the young girls are picking it up. It's amazing. So you're learning all the time, you adapt your work. Okay? It's all about adapting. Head down slightly. Why do I put the head down? Well, I'm finishing off. Why do I put the head down? Why don't I cut it just like that? Can't really see it. Got shadowing, and what's that make me naturally do? Mm -hmm. I move. I don't want to move. Why do I want to move? I like my back. I want to use it for another 20 years. So by him putting the head down slightly, I've got better light, plus my back stays straight. You notice my posture when I cut hair? Dead straight. My feet are at an A frame, and I'm dead straight. You can't see me. In my shops, my bad back, you get my bar with all like this. It's quite, quite interesting. All it needs is a bit of music, it's like a dance troupe. So I work around my head, and my arms are at a set position, the chair's at a good height for me, and I'm working all the time. Now I'm working away, I'm just checking, just double checking. I'm looking back, I'm using my light, I'm using my space, cross-checking. And all I'm doing is just going through, I'm looking at the conclusion. Now the end point we said, that's why I'm being very, very careful. I don't want to overcut anything, I just want to double check. Right, so let's go for the haircut. Is the neckline natural, does it look good? Okay, is the sideburns level? On the haircut, are they level? I haven't got a mirror, are they level? The same level. I'm using the perception of my eyes, I'm using what I've got. Front of the hair, have I scalped him? <coughs> have I cut the, the sides off? Have I really done a lot of damage on this bit and have I cut it too short? Okay. Remember we had it cut three weeks ago? So we're taking it back three weeks, correct? We haven't got a whole month, we've got it three weeks. How's the number two looking on the sides? Is that balanced? Is it looking perspective of the haircut? Does it look too short? Okay. How's the blend looking to you? Any lines in there, knocking around? Nice and easy, yeah? Simple, yeah? Okay. How's that crown sitting? Problem? Remember it bounced around a little bit. Remember we looked at the shape of the crown? How's that look? Does that look balanced? Does it look asymmetrical? Does it look too heavy? Does it look balanced? Balanced, okay. Does the back look balanced? Look down the line, look at the shape. Always look down the side of my chairs. Is the crown protruding? Is the neckline, the occipital line? Is it growing out? Is the neckline in balance with it? Does it jump out? Is it too in? Is it too deep? Is it balanced? Looking down the length, is it balanced? Is that look okay? Then symmetrically, it's correct. Technically, it's correct. Is it going to grow out nice? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay? How hard was that really? It wasn't that hard, was it? We approached it in quite a sensible way. We took our time, we worked through it. I didn't cut anything twice. I worked through a structure. The consultation was clear. The communication was good. Would you say that? Yeah. Okay. What you would do in front of a mirror, which I haven't got the privilege of having doing this, because I'm talking to you, you would normally talk to a client. During that haircut, you would commonly check in every five to ten minutes. How's that looking? How's the length of that? How do you wear your sideburns? Do you wear them high? Do you wear them medium? Do you wear them low? How do you want to wear them? Your beard, do you have it lined in at the top? Do you want it natural? Do you want the back line put in for yourself so you can serve off the bottom? Get it? What sort of shape do you want the beard? Do you want it fuller? Do you want it shorter? Do you want it short the sides and bigger here? How do you want your tash? Do you want to, do you want to grow it so you can curl it? You tell me, your haircut, I can do what you want. Lots and lots of questions. Do you want your eyebrows trimmed? How many people ask that? Every time, you should do. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. It doesn't make the hair grow quick. It's an old myth. You shave your eyebrows, it'll grow quicker. But it won't. Well, it won't grow any quicker than they're growing anyway. But they look tidier. A couple of spiders on your head, a bit of verandas and all of these. Keeps the sun out of your eyes. We're not on that, do we? Okay? Um, Product wise. Um, for me personally, when you do product sales, it's important for me. We do a lot of retail. I know you do retail in level two and level three. So what product would you advise this gentleman to have in his hair, the way he wears it? He's already explained how he wears it. What product would you finish with? Get some suggestions from anyone. Hairspray. Hairspray. Hairspray? Yeah. Why hairspray? Because then you can like, build it up and you get different types of hairspray. You know, like, for um, what type of hair thing? Would a bloke usually do that? Yeah. No. A lady would. A lady would spend hours. Doing. What would a bloke normally do? Okay. How would you wear your hair? What product do you put in your hair? Whatever's on offer. What? Whatever's on offer. There you go. Does he want a matte, See? Or, a matte oh, or a gloss finish though? Does he want a matte or a shine yeah. finish? Shine or a matte finish? Don't really care. Don't care. Do you wear <laughs> products at home? Yeah. You do. So would you put products every day or would you put it when you go out at night? Every morning. Every morning. Does it last all day? Most of my hair. Do you run your hands for your hair? Do you wear a hard hat? Do you wear, you know, I mean, this is a question you've got to ask. Do you wear anything the hair is going to irritate? Do you get hot? If you've got a water-based product and it gets hot, it's going to dilute, isn't it? <laughs> Put an oil-based product, it's going to make the head get spotty, you're going to get sore, it's going to get itchy. Yeah? Think about the product you're going to put in. I would say a matte finish to bring out texture. That's what I would do. You can also texture cut in this sort of hair. I'm going to put that in now. Um, free hand scissor cutting, you do it in your college and you'll do it with the numbers. You can even do it with a number on the card, a number 8, a number 7, and you can chamfer with it. Be careful, but you can take texture through hair with it. Does that make sense? So when I chamfer this way, you can actually chamfer through the hair that way. And the reason you do that, you encourage the way it's going to low. It's going to go this way, we know it's going to go that way. So what I'm going to do with this, is just use my scissors, and we put the scissor in the base, so it's sitting underneath on the head, and we very, very lightly, come across, okay? And this just adds surface texture, okay? It's very, very, very lightly, okay? Why am I not doing it that way? I will take loads out. If I do it this way, the hair sits on the blade first and the top blade just kisses it very, very lightly, okay? Okay? And you can direct anything you want with hair. So we can do it this way, we can direct it through, you can do what you want with hair. It's just, a, again, hair's a material. You can do what you want with it. So I'm actually going to encourage it to sit this way slightly, okay? The angle of my scissors are important, they're sitting upright, okay? And again, I'm just going to work around the crown. That gives more texture and movement to it. Okay? Don't need to blow dry it. Really and truly, I need to blow dry the bits out, which I'm not going to mind doing. I'm just going to put some matte products on it. So I'm going to put a crew fiber on it, very, very light, nothing too heavy. Again, water based products. Application of products, who teaches their clients how to do that? Every time. Okay, every time. Helps you sell your products. Here's a wax. What is it? Do with that then. Put it in your head, mate. That's a good sale, isn't it? Great salesman. A little bit in your hand, no fingers. Don't use your fingers. Was what the blokes do? Mm. I didn't like that way, actually, put me out. Didn't, it's all stuck at the front. If you put it at the front, mate, put it in one place, city fall. Okay, a little bit in the middle, palms, palm it through, okay? 
use it like a towel, get the products off the hands onto the hair, okay? Off the hands into the hair. Palm it through first. Evenly transport the products on your hands into the hair. Have you seen pompadour combs? Do you use a pompadour comb? You use them all the time, okay? Pompadour combs are cold. What they do, they put your finger lines in the hair. Much, much easier when you get your hands all rough. And we sell so many of these in some way. Every time we use, I'll have one of them. There we go. Five quid, five quid, five quid. It's great. Keep topping it up. Use your product through and then dress it out, okay? So this would cover texture. This would cover. So on your criteria, on your criteria cup, what techniques have I used if you're ticking your boxes for your testing? What have we used in this haircut? Go through it. What do we start off with? What techniques have we used? Anybody have a technique I'll put in here for us today? Cupcake. Cupcake. We've used cupcake. Who else have we used? Cupcake. 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 If you blow dry, you blow dry it forward because that's the way it runs, and you finish with tools. So we use products. We use clip over comb, scissor over comb. We've done the consultation. We've introduced product. So you can tick your boxes quite quick with one client if you use it properly. Is that correct? Okay. We've used a razor to finish. Invariably, I've not used it on this gentleman. He doesn't need it, but we could use a razor to finish. Okay. So again, your razor cutting in here. Um, We've tapered it all down, we've naturally shampered it. No, we've actually gone with the crown. The crown moves with it, it's easy. Look, the crown's actually sitting down and it's behaving. Because guess what? No one's got hard air to cut. This whole myth, oh, my is really difficult. Oh, I've got really hard air to cut. It's very thick. I'll get a pound for everybody's ever said that to me, I'll be a multi-millionaire. Right? End of the day, here's only what the obstacle is you, you're the obstacle on here. And I think working clients and working the way you work haircuts are really important to how you finish them, how you approach them, how you execute them, how you do your consultation, how you conclude them, and how you leave them in the chair, how they make you feel. When you have a really good haircut, Steve, how does it make you feel personally? It makes you feel good, doesn't it? It makes you feel good. That's the most important thing, it's the feelings bit. Get it? Do you feel better? I've got a logo on my wall on my shop. It pays to look and feel good. Good groom is our business. That's why we're here. I told you before, why are you a barber? You like people. I like making people feel good about themselves. That's a great job, isn't it? Someone asked me what I do for a living, okay? What I do for a living, and it's not common, it's exactly what I say. I'm God, I do say it. What do I do for a living? I make people look good and feel good. I go, wow. I do that one. I'm a barber. And I go, hmm. Both of you, what do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? Doctor. What do you do? Oh, I work Tesco's. It's boring, isn't it? Well done. Life can be as boring as you want it to be, okay? You're in a position to make people feel good, you can make them look good, you can give them confidence, you can communicate. You can be the person that brings them back into social outlets, you can be a listening tool, you can be a counsellor, you can do lots of things. A barber is a really important person in someone's life, yeah? It could be the connector, use the skills you're given, don't just cut out, okay? Happy with that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Give Stephen a nice round of applause. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, what time do you, do you want to start again this afternoon? I don't mind. Do you want a bit of a break? Do you want to... uh, at this time of day, we have a bit of an issue getting everybody through um, for food. So what we said, 45 minutes. Is that all right? Your lunch is already here. What would you rather do? One business. Half an hour, 45 minutes. Do half an hour? Half an hour. Half an yeah. hour break and then go and fight and again. Go and fight in the factory for a bit. I don't is that know. okay? We'll give you that half hour? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. And come back with some questions. When you're done, and we're doing, think of what you're doing, you're doing and ask some um, questions. Um, I'm not that car park. I've had some help. I'll go and see if you can move it.
Can't go too long with six months. Need a little bit bigger than six months. Are you? Scissor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wonder what I'm cutting else is. It's quite difficult. This is what I'm cutting. Do you want to do a small section? You know when you're turning the phone on? Yeah. I'm cutting it from the bottom blade steel. Right. I'm not doing this. I will nick this. Yeah. So I don't do it. I do it palm to palm. Right, okay. Palm to palm when you stop, because the bottom blade sits there, so you can't right. possibly cut. Oh, yeah. you know, this stands still, the top one moves. Yeah. It's not this, because you will need it. It's a long time to palm to palm. It goes through. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Steve. No worries. I'll I'll probably knit down yeah. just to Susan speak John. to the ball, yeah. but if we're not doing a tutorial. No, that's cool. Yeah, then just I'll just hold on to We're all we're only doing Kahoot anyway, so Yeah. All right, mate. All right. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Okay. I'm in love with them scissors. Happy? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, no, nice, it, yeah, a little bit, but it's nice to hear you reinforcing all the things that I tell. That's good. That's and good. they don't listen to me. Little git, not saying that they knew anything. Is there anything new you've learned from that today? Mm -hmm. Anything different other than the chamfer and the taper technique? The chamfer, oh, I do, but I didn't know what it was called. It's a How do you spell that? Chamfer, or oh, blimey. Chamfer, come on. Chamfer. Um, I'll spell it with a PH. Doesn't matter, does it, as long as you understand it? There's your lunch. Well, what chamfer makes the taper and they blend, they come together. Yeah. If you're doing this, your, be your bevel blade, that's why they went a bevel and a flat. Uh, people try and do that with a fade blade. It's going to leave a line because there's no bevel in it. So a bevel blade naturally pulls the hair away. So you're creating a graduation you don't want. Mm -hmm. And then you spend half hour chasing the graduation, you're not going yeah. too short. So the way you use your clippers actually affects the way you graduate your hair. Mm -hmm. So if you do it incorrectly, you lose the shape of the cut you're doing. But if you chamfer, you're coming away and retaining shape. And then the taper comes a lot low and you've still got the blend. But it blends up in the right position. You finish where you want to.